Welcome back to another Steam Deck or handheld gaming video in general, right? Where, as you know, the Steam Deck is one of the hottest pieces of tech from last year and well into this year. And we've got new gaming PCs on the horizon, like the Asus ROG Ally, which we're going to be covering a lot on this channel. So just subscribe and click the bell icon for that, because I can't wait to talk more about it. It's We've got a lot of new news regarding the ROG Ally, and I can't wait to share with you and talk about it. So anyways, on to that. So basically... AMD's Ryzen Z1 chip, which is going to be powering the new Asus ROG Ally, it boasts about damn near 50 to 100% more performance than the Steam Deck, which is a big deal. Now, they're talking about we're going to be getting close to 100% more FPS on games over the Steam Deck, and some people are saying it's going to make the Steam Deck obsolete when these chips come out, because they're not only are they 50 to 100% more powerful, potentially more um but they're also very power efficient, and that's where the 6800U chips that were in the INEO 2 fell short. So basically, if you got a 6800U in the INEO 2 or something like that, and you ran it at 15 watts, the same wattage as your Steam Deck, you'd see it would have less performance, and it would, you know, it would have a good bit less performance. To match the Steam Deck's performance, you'd have to crank it up to like 20 watts, 22 watts, or something like that resulting in less battery life so there wasn't really a chip out there that can match the steam deck on power efficiency power efficiency and performance well the Ryzen Z1 is looking like it's going to be changing that so let's get into it i'm laced okay like says like subscribe click the bell icon and let's talk about the Ryzen Z1 and what it means for the steam deck So guys, before we get into it, please check out our link of favorite Steam Deck accessories. I'll put it in the top comment of this video and the video description down below. So go check it out, bookmark it, share with friends, click the heart button, follow it. Um, it's great for gift ideas. It has everything you need for the Steam Deck, bunch of accessory ideas, everything's on Amazon. Everything's, most, uh, mostly everything has Amazon Prime delivery and I'm always adding stuff to it. So it's always updating. I'm gonna be adding some cool things to it later this week. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, go check that out, go bookmark it, go save it for later. Anyways, onto the news. So. The Ryzen Z1 chips could power a new wave of handheld Steam Deck clones. Now, I'm, I do have to admit, the Steam Deck is pretty unique, and it was one of the first handheld gaming PCs on the market. Yes, we could say GPD had their GPD win beforehand, but this is probably one of the first, the Steam Deck is probably one of the first mainstream um, handheld gaming PCs that have really gained traction, whether you know, with it paired with SteamOS, the all the nice user interface, constant updates and improvements they've been releasing, Proton, etc. The trackpads, the form factor, just everything about it is just more perfect as you would know. Um, and obviously, there's going to be a bunch more companies coming out and trying to copy that or steal the thunder from Valve. Um, and Valve, I hope you're on your toes because there's going to be a big wave of new PCs coming out this year in the next month or two that obviously trounce the steam deck in performance so i hope you've got something ready to fight these things so the z1 series is already coming to at least one handheld pc the asus rog ally now we said at the start of the video this thing is going to offer 50 to 100 percent more performance over the steam deck so that is a pretty big jump out of the gate now i can't speak to the rog ally because i don't have one in my hands Asus, if you're listening, send me a review sample. I'll send it back to you. It's fine. Or I'll keep it and steal it. Because <laughs> um, I love to do a bunch of videos on it and performance tests. But um, so, yeah, this thing is going to come out and it's going to change the handheld gaming PC market. Now, I'm hoping this is the chip that's going to give us 60 FPS minimum in every game, including games like Elden Ring, the new Star Wars game, Hogwarts, Dead Island 2 that just came out. 60 FPS is the golden number. Now, if we can get more than 60, the ROG Ally does have a 120 hertz screen. Don't forget that fact. But if we can get at least 60 as a standard with decent visuals, I will be over the moon. And I think most people will be too, including yourself. Um, so NVIDIA GPUs power the vast majority of gaming PCs, but for the more integrated game system like consoles, PS5, Xbox, Nintendo, AMD's ability to offer tightly integrated Ryzen CPUs and Radeon GPUs has earned it many customers and lots of revenue. The most notable of these is Valve Steam Deck, which combines a Zen 2 based CPU and RDNA 2 based GPU cores to provide passable performance for most games. Um, though AMD has designed the Steam Deck's chip exclusively for Valve, today the company is announcing a pair of Ryzen chips aimed at the growing number of Steam Deck-esque handheld PCs from other companies. The Ryzen Z1 and Z1 Extreme respectively combine 6 or 8 Zen 4 based CPU cores with 4 or 12 RDNA 3 
based GPU cores and using AMD's latest architectures and a 4 nanometer manufacturing process to outrun the Steam Deck's APU. So this thing is truly is the next gen Steam Deck CPU APU and it's not going to be in the Steam Deck. It's going to be in a lot of their competitors handhelds, which is kind of cool. So yeah, so instead of RDNA 2, like it's in the Steam Deck, this thing has an RDNA 3 based GPU. Um, it's using Zen 3 architecture for the CPU, which is a whole new generation over the Steam Decks. And it uses a smaller manufacturing processor, 4 nanometers. So they've basically shrunk all those cores down into an even smaller package, which means more power efficiency, AKA better battery life and better performance. So less cooling needed, obviously, to cool this thing. So that's obviously a win-win-win. Um, here's the chart that AMD's posted. AMD Ryzen Z1 uh, series processors, the power you need for next-gen handheld PC console gaming. So obviously, this is gonna be a big market for AMD now going into the future. Obviously, we've seen how successful the Steam Deck is. We've seen how successful the Nintendo Switch has been and will continue to be. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we're gonna see the AMD Ryzen Z1 in the next Nintendo Switch. That be getting announced as well this year this is a big year guys for handheld gaming and we've got a new handheld gaming website i'm about to release later in later this month around then um specifically for handheld consoles and handheld gaming in general because it's a market that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more successful i'm excited to share it with you um and it's not just steam deck focused okay it, it covers everything so here we go md ryzen z1 extreme so there's gonna be two variants of it the ryzen z1 extreme and the ryzen z1 okay obviously i want to go for the ryzen z1 extreme and i hope i hope to everyone that we're going to see this bad boy in a handheld gaming piece and not just a laptop but a handheld gaming PC, perhaps the ROG Ally, 8.6 teraflops, 8.6 teraflops, eight cores, 16 threads, 12 RDNA 3 graphic scores and 24 megabytes of total cache, 8.6 teraflops. Now, let me just check real fast, guys. Let me pause and check what we have again for the teraflops in terms of the, the Steam Deck. Um, oh, it already says there, hold on, hold on, hold on. So the Nintendo Switch currently is 0 0.4 teraflops, all right? 0.4 the ryzen z1 extreme is 8.6 that is a massive massive jump massive jump in performance i can't believe it let me just go check the steam deck real fast so guys the steam deck right now is 1.6 teraflops of graphics performance 1.6 which is around the same as a base ps4 performance the new Ryzen Z1 Extreme, which is going to be going into handheld PC game consoles. It's going to be up to 8.6 teraflops. What? 8.6. And the Steam Deck is 1.6. I think it's very realistic to say, very realistic to say that we're going to be able to be playing games, new releases at good frame rates. No more sub 20, <laughs> sub 30 FPS. I am excited as heck for this guys and let me know what you think in the comments um now i think it's going to be a case by case basis right this is up to 8.6 teraflops now that's assuming you're going to be able to pump this pump the cpu and gpu in the whole package with probably over 30 watts of power um just to the cpu gpu or the apu they call it um which is just going to demolish the battery life but even hell even if we get a good middle ground where it's like three to four teraflops um, at good TDPs, that will be a game changer. <laughs> a game changer, just 100% more performance of the Steam Deck is exciting in itself. It, does this suggest that we're gonna potentially get more than that? That's a massive jump for AMD. I'm gonna buy some AMD stock after this, I think. So, so yeah, there we go. So AMD says via the various that the Ryzen League one can run games about 55% faster than the Steam Deck. And this is, I believe, around at the same TDP, so 15 watt, okay? So this is just a Ryzen Z1, 55% faster than the Steam Deck, reflecting the improved performance and efficiency of the newer architectures and manufacturing process. 
interestingly, the Z1 Extreme's extra GPU cores, 12 up from 4 in the Z1, improve gaming performance, but they don't come anywhere near tripling or even doubling it. Okay, here we go. The extra hardware helps, but we're still dealing with integrated GPUs here, attached to a relatively slow pull of DDR5 that they can share with the rest of the system rather than dedicated GDR, GDDR6 or GDDR6X memory. Now, the specs of the Z1 chips appear similar to some of AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7000U processors for Ultrabooks and thin and light gaming notebooks, but AMD says the Z1 chips are customized power and voltage curves and other differences that make them better suited for handheld systems so obviously we're going to get some really good performance now they've given us some benchmarks here so amd ryzen z1 series full native hd 1080p performance this is the sort of frames we're going to be getting guys so red dead redemption 2 at 1080p um low settings mm, average 47 47.9 on the Z1 Extreme. Okay, the, the FPSs aren't too great here, okay? Um, I was expecting more. Borderlands 3, 57.7. CSGO, highest details, 162. Average, 89.3 for Grand Theft Auto 5. Company of Heroes, 360. Uh, Forza Horizon 4, 121 frames for Forza Horizon 4. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 73. 51 for Far Cry 6. Ooh. Now, I'm, I'm, this is 1080p native, so with FSR enabled and stuff, obviously we're going to be able to bump these up to at least 60. Um, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, 64, 102 for Dota 2. All right, I'll admit, I'll admit, I was kind of expecting a little bit more, or I, I want to see game, I want to see some of the newest releases, okay? Because some of the newest releases are actually a little bit more optimized than these older games. These older games were not designed in the slightest for handheld consoles um, and handheld integrated GPUs. So... Um, I want to see the performance on new new releases like the new Star Wars game, Dead Island 2, stuff like that, you know, um, Elden Ring, um, because we know those are a little bit more optimized for lower end systems like these ones. Um, the Ryzen Z1 chips will initially power the ASUS ROG Ally, an upcoming handheld PC that ASUS confusingly decided to announce on April 1st. Many companies use April, blah, blah, okay, AMD uses ASUS will, AMD says that ASUS will announce more about the ROG Ally on May 11th. The AMD's performance numbers are all from an ROG Ally prototype running in turbo mode, which allows the APU to drop to 30 watts of power. Modes that cut performance in favor of the better battery life may not perform as well. Though Ryzen Z1 based handheld should be capable of faster over overall performance than the Steam Deck, Valve SteamOS may still have a competitive advantage. Other handheld PCs like the iNeo have shipped with Windows, which has great game compatibility, but its mouse and keyboard centric user interface isn't a great fit for small screen handhelds. But some engineers within Microsoft have tested a handheld mode that would solve most some if not most of these problems but we don't know when or whether it will see the light of day so as you as you know as if you watched my previous video go back and watch it microsoft are developing a handheld gaming mode for windows so basically for a lot basically everyone's focusing on these handheld gaming pcs right now including microsoft and as you would know if you've tried running microsoft on the steam deck it's a little bit of a chore it's not very optimized the virtual keyboard is horrible it's a nightmare to navigate but Microsoft knows this and they're paying attention and they're hoping to try and create some kind of mobile gaming UI, you know, for accessing your games and libraries and stuff on Windows comfortably on a handheld system or with a gamepad, right? So that's always good news. Go watch the video. We talked about it and we shared off some preview, some little um, snippets and pictures of them using it and developing it so go check that out anyways guys let me know what you think about the new z1 line of ryzen apus for handheld game consoles i think i thought it was very interesting that they specifically advertise it for next gen handheld pc console gaming they're dipping their toes in just about everything right now right so it's exciting let me know what you think in the comments and as always check out our list of favorite steam deck accessories i told you about it at the start of the video link top comment and video description just about everything you need for your steam deck on here right so go save it go bookmark it because i'm always adding stuff to it so anyways guys i'll see you in the next video on blaze 2k please like subscribe click the bell icon if you love handheld gaming like i do and you're excited about the whole just the, the future of handheld gaming right let me know in the comments if you're excited and um come follow me on twitter as well because i'm hanging around on twitter all the time anyways take care all the links you need down below i'll see you in the next one peace